In this video, we're going to talk about how to choose a production platform once your Ruby on Rails application is ready to go. It's actually kind of an evolved decision because you have three things you need to consider to start with when choosing your platform. What type of web server you're going to use, which operating system you're going to deploy on, and the database that's going to be on the back end of your Ruby on Rails application. Now probably the first place to start is down at the bottom with your database. Whatever database you're developing with, you should be using that in production. Or, or should I say, whatever database you're going to use and end up using in production should drive your development. If you're going to be using DB2, you're better off doing your development in DB2. And the choice of the database kind of dictates which operating system you're going to have to deploy on in some sense. Not completely. Your database can be separate. Uh, it's quite easy to do, but in some cases that isn't the case. It's one server you're going to deploy. So again, it's a decision you're going to have to make. It's two servers, more money, of course. If you're going to deploy on a database, say you're going to use uh, Microsoft SQL Server, but you're going to deploy on Mac OS X, well, that's two servers you're going to have to do because Microsoft SQL Server only runs on Windows. And depending on the version, it's only going to run on a much newer version of Windows. And there's similar limitations on DB2. MySQL is a little bit more wide open. It'll run on all three operating systems. OpenBase, I believe, is limited to the Mac OS X. Postgres, again, a little bit more open. So you're going to have to take a look at that. Now, between the different operating systems, the main difference is aside from some performance variation is how things are set up. Linux and Mac OS X are very similar in how they're set up and what you have to do to get them going. Windows is a little bit different just what tools you have to use and some of the syntax of commands that you're gonna set up and move forward with. Finally your web server and again this is kinda dependent upon your operating system to, to a little extent you notice that IIS isn't on this list. You have the Lite TTP D server, you have Apache, and you have WebBrick. And our little table here, which is kind of a modified version that I found in the Agile Web Development with Rails book from the Pragmatic Programmers, is showing kind of the difference between these. Now, starting down at the bottom, WebBrick is really easy. We've been using that in all of our development. You essentially do script server and it's running but it doesn't scale. WebBrick is a Ruby based web server and boy once you start getting a few users on there it's going to slow down quite rapidly. It's okay speed wise for how fast things get done but again if you're worried about scalability that speed is going to really hurt you. Going up the list we have Apache. Apache frankly right now is, is a bear to set up specifically to get your CGI library connecting through Apache. It isn't the easiest thing to do. It scales really well. Apache scales well, that's no doubt there. And speed wise it's, it's a fast web server. Most people seem to use Apache but it's not going to be easy getting your Rails application working with it. What seems to be the web server choice is Lite TTPD. It's not too hard to set up. It's certainly easier than Apache, but it is a lot harder than WebBrick because WebBrick is just a script you run. It scales very well and it has a very good latency, so it's got good speed. So that's why most people choose that. In the working files with these videos, I will include links to the light TTPD and the, the fast CGI tools. It's also in the video that we covered on installation, these links were there. And the best thing to do with the light HTTPD is actually install it from source code. So you actually compile it and set it up yourself. That way you can get the most optimized performance for your particular system. So those are the choices you're gonna have to make with what platform that you wanna choose and it's really dependent upon the factors I've outlined. In the next video, we're going to look at the basics of deployment, specifically with regards to light TTPD.